Time is upon us already to talk about the last car in GT7's May update. Of course, the second of two Volvos, the V40 T5R design. This is a vehicle which I feel like I'm kind of out of the loop on compared to a lot of other people. I'm seeing a lot of positive feedback on this car. Not as much as the estate, of course, but I've seen more than a few people commenting saying that they really like this thing, they find it great through corners or just a great performance car all round, and I don't really get that. <laughs> now, maybe I'm just missing missing something here, but the one that I'm driving is fully built. It's not on the best tyres around, and of course that does make a difference, but still, tyres alone aren't enough to fully ruin or make a great or bad car. So that alone, I'm not buying it. This thing in standard form has promising numbers. It's already a semi-performance trim. I mean, some would say it is a performance trim, but I would actually kind of disagree with that, and we'll get to why in a second. It's a front-engine, front-wheel drive chassis. It's turbo-aspirated, has 210 horsepower, and even though it is the heaviest car out of all five in the update, it's still not that heavy for a modern machine. 1,540 kilos, although when you factor in that that is a front-wheel drive chassis, that is fairly heavy by front-wheel drive standards. The point level as well is fairly low, 443 certainly isn't breaking the bank, and the price at 40 grand will technically means that, ironically, it's the cheapest car. It's even cheaper than the 240, which is just under 41,000, so across the board on paper, it sounds promising. It sounds like it should be like a decent alternative to the hot hatches, for example, that are already in the game. And of course, Volvo has had connections to stuff like the Ford Focus Performance Range. The C30, for example, if I recall correctly, has essentially a detuned version of a Focus RS engine, and it's something of a sleeper because of that, because people mostly don't know that, they mostly don't know how quick Volvos can be, and so you get a lot of car for typically a lot lower of a price. The problem that I fundamentally have with this one though is nothing to do with its straight line performance. In fact, fully built, you're looking at around 450 horses. Of course, you can drop the weight by quite a bit and it is quick. I'm not denying that. In a straight line, it is a very quick car. In fact, it's quick enough to keep up with and even overtake the 911 GT1, as you'll see later on in this race. But again, of course, you're talking about AI, so it's not necessarily the best gauge in the world, but still to even be in the discussion for keeping up with supercars on the straights, mind you, it really does show just how quick this thing can be. That's not where I take issue with it. Where I take issue with this car, or at least how it's been represented here in the game, is that to me there are two wildly different ways of building a quote-unquote fast car. And for our younger viewers, or in general people who maybe haven't driven many performance cars, you might not understand what I'm getting at here, but go with me. There are two ways of building a fast car. There are certain cars which feel like they were built to be performance cars. Everything about those cars is designed and honed and developed around that fact. That's their primary purpose. It's why vehicles like the Honda Type R Civic, or the Renault Clio Sport, or the Megane Sport, the Megane Cup, etc. They feel like everything about the car is honed in. It's where everything on the car feels like it's all working together. The chassis, the suspension, the brakes, the handling, the power, and it almost means that sheer horsepower doesn't actually matter as much because everything about the car is so good to drive it makes up for any lack of power anyway. It's part of the reason why I love my Daihatsu so much. The Rally 2 is only a 110 horsepower car. I also love the Fiat Panda, 100 HP which is only a 100 horsepower car, and yet there's still so much fun because everything feels like it's honed in to be fun, to be charismatic, and to be quick. On the other hand, if you take a vehicle which should feel like that, something like, let's say, a Renault Velsatis, or, I don't know, three and a half litre V6 Laguna, or a Vauxhall Signum, these kind of weird middle ground cars, just as a few examples of what I'm talking about, they have, in most cases, fairly large, fairly powerful engine options. You can get 3.2, 3.5 V6s, over 200 horsepower out of them. They're cars which certainly weren't cheap when they came out when new, and they have a decent level of spec, at least on paper. They should be quote-unquote, fast cars. And yet, they are not the kind of vehicles which anyone would really argue necessarily feel like performance cars in practice. And it's because of what I just said. The rest of the car doesn't really feel like it matches that straight-line power. That, to me, is exactly the vibe that I get off of this Volvo. And I hate to say it because I am a big Volvo fan, modern and classic, but to me, this really does feel like one of those cars which is a performance car only in name. It feels like a trim level. It doesn't feel like an actual performance car to me. What I I wanted from this car was very low, and even with those low expectations, it still managed to feel fairly lukewarm to me. And I hate to say that, because Volvo in the past has proven they can make incredible performance cars to the point of even being in the same conversation as a Focus RS, or in the case of their sports saloons, their equivalent sports saloons from other brands at the time, etc, etc. Of course, they have a, a rich history of rally, etc. All of that lends itself to making great performance production cars. 
This just doesn't feel like that to me. And I feel like I'm going crazy because I'm not seeing that sentiment from anyone else. It must be me. It feels like it has some right ideas, but they don't quite come together in the way that I was expecting it to. It feels like a by the numbers technical approach to having a performance model in your lineup for people to buy it, see the fact that it has 210 horsepower, it's called R Design. That sounds pretty cool to me. It's kind of sporty to throw around a popular word in real life but it isn't actually a performance car to go nine tenths of the way there. It's, it's an early stages performance car, at least that's the way I would describe it. I'll be very curious to know how these compare in real life, but of course I haven't driven one yet, so I can't say how the game uh, represents it. I would imagine they did as good of a job as they generally do, which should be at least passable, if not good. So it's a weird one for me. How on earth could the old 109 horsepower wagon be that much more fun to drive? How could a little Civic with 160 horses run rings around this thing, both for actual competitive ability and for the fun factor. Well, comparing it to something like a Civic might not be fair, given that car's performance heritage, but still, this is presenting itself as a performance car, so I have to treat it as such. I do feel, though, that it might just be me, so I'd love to hear your thoughts below, and maybe why, if you do feel differently, why that's the case. Did you find a certain sweet spot for the car, for example, or a certain way of tuning it that really suited you? That's it for my thoughts on the Volvo V40 and for all five vehicles. And if you're hungry for more content on the channel after this, of course, in addition to the plenty of videos I've already done, tomorrow you'll definitely want to stick around because I'm doing a type of video which kind of jumps back to the older days of the channel in the automotive world, and I think you might enjoy it. But that wraps up this review. Of course, I'll see you next time with more, and for now, thanks for watching.